Hello everybody, my name is Gabe and this is episode 3 to my UNET multiplayer uh, first person shooter tutorial series. So uh, in this episode we're going to be doing some pretty basic shooting uh, as this is a first person shooter we obviously want to have some shooting so uh, let's get straight into that. Uh, I'm going to go in my scripts folder here and I'm going to create a C sharp script called shooting and we're going to open that up. Alright so once you've opened the script I'm just going to do the do and remove all this. Okay, so we're gonna make this a uh, networking uh, script or network behavior. So we're gonna have to do Unity Engine dot networking. All right, and we're gonna instead of mono uh, bleh, instead of a mono behavior, we're gonna have to make this a network behavior. All right, that's good. And now uh, we're gonna set up a few basic variables. I'm going to set up uh, a public variable called, um, well, let's decide. I'll probably make this a float. doesn't really matter too much. Um, called weapon damage. And I'll just make this 25. Actually, we'll do, we'll do something different. We'll do minimum uh, weapon damage. And we're also going to do public float um, max weapon damage. So we'll make this 50F. Uh, so whenever we do shoot it will uh, give damage in between these two numbers. Okay, I'm also going to make another float called weapon range, which could be about, by default, 100F. Uh, okay, so I'm going to make a private void update, and we're going to do if input dot get key down key code dot mouse one to see if we left clicked and we do have to make a ray cast so we're going to do ray and we do have to find the camera so I'm going to make it public game object uh, FPS camera so ray ray which I'm going to call the ray ray uh, is equal to FPS camera dot screen point oops is actually equal to FPS. Oh, I screwed up. We have to make this a camera, not a game object. So FPS camera dot screen point to ray. And we're going to make this a new vector to screen dot width. Oops, screen dot width divided by two. And the screen's height divided by two. And close that off with a semicolon. And what this is all doing right here is we're making a ray that is going to draw in the center of the screen. So now we're going to make a raycast hit and name it hit info. Okay, so when we left click, we want to make sure that we check for a ray, uh, a raycast on the um, on a tag or an object. We want to see if we uh, had made any contact. So I'm going to make another if statement here called if physics dot raycast and we're going to open a new set of parameters I'm going to do ray out hit info and weapon range close that off and now uh, we're going to do if the target so oops I screwed up if hit info dot collider dot target or dot tag is equal to uh, enemy then damage enemy here. Okay, uh, another thing I want to do is make a boolean, so I'm going to make a public bool uh, debug mode is equal to false, or by default we'll just make it true, whatever. Um, and over here we'll do if debug mode, oops, if debug mode is equal to true, then we are going to do debug dot draw array array dot origin array dot direction multiplied by the weapon range color dot green so whenever we have debug mode enabled in the scene view we will be able to see the ray in green okay so let's go uh, check that out we're gonna pull up the player I'm just gonna bring him out here and I will just put the script 
I'll just put the script here. It doesn't really matter right now. I'll just put shooting. Minimize these. Okay, and we're gonna drag over the FPS camera, apply, and we can delete the player from the from the scene. So now, if I go to the main menu, play, and LAN host. Okay, we're gonna have to fix this issue um, with the cube in front of us. We'll do that in a sec. Um, we should see in the scene view, we do have a ray and it's working perfectly fine. So if I move this over here, you can see I'm moving around the mouse and we could see the ray is following where we are looking, which is exactly what we want. Okay, good. So now, uh, I'm actually going to fix that problem that we're having there. So for player network, I'm going to do gonna do a public game object I object and if is local player or if we are not the local player then I object dot enabled or dot set active true actually no I'll, I'll do this the other way around we'll do uh, if Never mind. Uh, set active true. Yeah, we'll just leave it like that. Um, so we'll just set this to true if we are the local player. So I'll bring back the player here. Uh, go to the player network. I object. So I'll grab the I and disable this. Apply apply and delete now if we're in the game we should be able to see that there is no uh, object in front of us so um, nothing is gonna happen yet we can't really see anything all we have is a ray but it doesn't do anything yet so we're gonna make a prefab in the game and we're just gonna make this a cube scale this up a little bit And this will be our enemy. And I want to sort of make him the same size. So. That should be good. Doesn't really matter too much. At least at the moment. So, I don't know. We'll just leave it like that. That's fine. And I'll make him red. So, in materials, I'll make a new one called red. Put it on the enemy. Make him red, and that should be good. I'll just call this enemy, and put him, give him a network identity, and a network transform. Uh, the network transform is temporary. We will make our own um, network synchronization uh, thing like we did for the player, but for the enemy, this is temporary. So, he's not going to move yet or anything, but I am going to give him a tag called enemy. Alright, so in the prefab, so I'll just put him there. Delete. And if we go to the main menu, and in the network manager, I do want to add him as a registered spawnable prefab. Uh, this is very important. If it is not a registered spawnable prefab, then we're going to run into some problems when we attempt to spawn the enemy. Actually, instead of uh, removing him, I'll, I'll just keep him there. It's fine. Because I'm not going to make a... We're not going to do a script right now with spawning the enemy. Okay, so over here we're going to do debug.log. We hit an enemy. Okay be hot and then be nice okay we hit an enemy so if we go in the game oops we have to go in the main menu 
then we left click on the enemy it should say in the console yes it does uh, we hit an enemy and every time I click it'll say that okay so that uh, I think wraps it up for the day uh, we have some basic shooting there does seem to be something wrong with the with the enemy though no okay I guess not it's just my terrible aim uh, yeah so that's basically it for today uh, next episode we're gonna get into some more advanced shooting obviously we're gonna be shooting the player uh, the network player and then we'll start making the enemy move uh, yeah things like that uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and have a good one